Happy motherfucking Friday, people. I feel like you guys will most likely be seeing this on Sunday, though. So if you are, I hope you're ready to fucking smash a week, win that day, Monday, set the tone. Regardless, welcome back. I do apologize. Didn't upload last week. Shocking from me. Caught food poisoning or something like that. I don't know what it was, but let's just say Drew's stomach was not happy. Time to catch you up with things. Weight has slowly been creeping up. This morning, weighed in at 82.9 kilos, which is roughly 15 kilos above the lightest I actually weighed on prep. Stage weight would have been around 73 kilos, but I'll quickly show you a photo of what the rig is looking like. Was quite impressed with them. Water weight seems to slowly be flushing out and I'm not looking to shoot up weight too fast, to be honest. I'm just trying to get some of that water off. Again, whilst building kind of muscle underneath that, putting on a bit of fat. It's getting wintry, getting cold. This time last year, I was probably 90, 95 kilos. No, probably 100. So yeah, you definitely feel the, the cold, brisk winter, even though it's not winter yet, a lot more when you're leaner compared to when you're a bit more bulkier. God help anyone who's still on prep. Other than that, training is going fucking splendid. Made a few tweaks to my training split to include different movements. Took 180 for eight the other day in terms of RDLs, which was a five kilo drop in weight, but I still progressively overload because my form was fucking immaculate. And that meant that my back was absolutely fried up until like yesterday. Today, it's not too bad. Today, we have got legs on my cards. Now, I've been playing around with a different approach to some training. So unfortunately, so usually I do a set of quad compound movements and a set of glute compound movements. Now usually I'm absolutely fried by the time I get to glutes because I've just come off a leg press and usually I have to stick like eight, nine plates on a leg press to get adequate stimulus to fit in within that five to 10 rep range. So what I've been doing is weirdly, there's a pin loaded leg press at my gym. Now I can full stack it and I'm gonna put a gym pin on it but put my feet as low on the pad and really just rinsing the eccentric and matching that same intensity. However, I do not fry my CNS on my head and I'm not as fatigued as I would be if I was on a leg press, like plate loaded. So we're gonna keep doing that because I think that's very beneficial to then my glute training afterwards as well. And also makes me dread legs a little bit less because sometimes when I stick nine plates on a leg press, it's not all quad. A lot of it's got to be glutes because my ankle flexibility is shite. And as we know, the higher up on the pad, the more hip flexion, the more glute activation. The lower on the pad, the more quad flexion. Quad flexion? Quad activation because it's more knee flexion. Yeah. But yeah, we're going to go get the the pre-gym... We're going to go get the pre-gym scran and it's right now. Oats to the dome. You know how it'd be. Let's get it. Thought you guys may appreciate seeing the absolute state of those oats. I've got bananas, dark chocolate, peanut butter, handful of cereal, untracked because it's a Friday. Whey protein, all that jazz. Again, I always just feel like whey protein, not whey protein, I always feel like oats are um, like pre-workout fuel. I always really associate oats with being like gym fuel and I always really struggle to eat them when I'm not going to the gym. Just because they respond so well to my body. And again, it's one of those things, find those carbohydrates which work well for you. You could be into bodybuilder baby food, which is cream of rice, and four squares bars, so that's 100 gram of carb. To find what digests well for you and sits nice. But I'm gonna shut up, leg tan. <laughs>
thinking of a melted wheelie bin. But Sex Drive has returned. It's a big win there. Rig looks like a melted wheelie bin, but the Sex Drive's returned. So, old call in the caterpillar cake. How quickly could you eat it? Because he's chatting four minutes. Now that was a very, very juicy leg day. Quads are fucked, so are my glutes. Again, I know I spoke about it before in terms of that pin-loaded leg press, but CNS and fatigue-wise, I'm actually not horrendous, but my quads are in bits. And also being able to separate quad movement from glute movement compared to before where on something like a leg press when I activate a lot of hip extension just because of my shit ankle flexibility, um, I'd find I'd get onto that like glute drive and uh, my fatigue was just through the roof. But overall, very good, very good session. Very happy with body composition, slowly regaining that muscle which we lost towards that back end of prep. But that was a case, that was a scenario. We couldn't control that. We showed up, we did what we did. As always, now regaining season, getting the rig back. Goated cereal has been acquired. Cookie crisps, post-workout about to go down. Ice cream, standard. Cookie crisp, standard. And then later, I've got myself an off-plan meal, which we'll talk about a little bit more now. Yes, peeps, back again. I know you've just seen me two seconds ago, but I just want to talk through a good suggestion made by my good friend Keno on what to speak on for the rest of this video. And I want to talk about how I'm going to approach an off-plan meal in my off-season. Or you could even apply this to something like an on-season being a diet phase or a cut or a prep. Maybe not prep, that's different. Now, of course, in the off-season, you're gonna have a lot more flexibility to play around with your food. You play around with your off-plan. So simply, for example, today, good example. Usually, I'm sitting at 350 carb training day, 180 protein, 50 fat. So I had my pre-meal, which was roughly around 20 grams of fat, roughly 120 grams of carbs and 40, 45 grams of protein. Then, because it was legs, I had my post-workout meal, which was roughly around, again, 100 gram of carb, 45 grams of protein and five grams of fat, say. So I've had half my daily fat, a good two thirds of my daily carbs and probably like just below, probably like a third of my daily protein. I've had half my daily protein. So now I could fill in this gap with another meal but I'm just gonna pull back on meal number three. And actually it suits quite well because the difference between the post-workout meal and my final meal is roughly four hours, which is no, which is roughly how long we need to wait between each meal to spike muscle protein synthesis being all optimal. And I'm just gonna go enjoy an off-plan meal tonight. It's not that simple. And I'm not gonna think about it. I'm not gonna stress about it too much. Any excess weight I put on will most likely be through water weight. Cause when I go back to baseline next week, maybe not next week, but usually if I was to go back to baseline, the water weight would just come back off. And also, at the same time, you can't be so anal and so fixated about food in the off season if you are looking to prep. You've got to kind of reap the flexibility of the off season. Because when it's prep and you know you're not gonna give yourself any leeway, you're gonna wish you did. Now, say you're in a little diet phase as well, a little, little mini cut, trying to shed off a few little pounds. What I mostly say to my clients who have got occasions coming up is first of all, eat to satiation. Now that means eat till you are full. Don't overindulge. Yes, it's very easy for the primal instinct to kick in and go, this man's been starving himself. Let's overeat so we can store as, bo bo as body fat. But just eat to satiation, eat to fullness. Understand the difference between food taste and food volume when you're craving the taste of something compared to tasting volume. That don't make sense. Between craving volume. If you're craving volume, think of something lower calorie. Jelly, fucking, most likely vegetables. But if you're actually craving the taste of something, just don't overindulge. Also, if you're in a diet phase, 
Try and just make it a little bit more leaner. Something like a Nando's. Really good, really good off our meal for people in a diet phase. Yes, it's going to be a bit saltier, so we're going to hold more water weight because peri-peri salt is banging. But we take that into account. People think that when you're in a diet phase or a mini cut, you're not able to have off plans. You can. Roughly, once a week is fine. Just don't be stupid on them and have a Chinese buffet and overindulge too much, if you know what I mean. And to be honest, with prep, there's not much room for off plan meals, unless it is a moral thing. Again, on prep, I actually had a few like off plan meals on my refeed days where we pulled back on like 300, 400 gram of carbohydrate on those refeed days to fit in an off plan meal. Realistically, actually undershooting the calories for that day. But for me, morally, it made sense. For example, when I was out in America, I would have New York bagels, or I went out for one or two meals out there and just pull back on carbohydrates on my refeed days when I was having 700 gram of carb. So I'd have 300 grams of carb before it, and then 400 gram of carb leeway, which is roughly 1200 cal uh, 1,600 calories, because four grams of, uh, four calories for a gram of carbohydrate. And realistically, was my off plan gonna be over 1600 calories? Most likely not. And if it was, I was being a bit of a muppet. So, reap the benefits of off plans. They're gonna help massively with diet fatigue. I personally find that after an off plan, I'm ready to get back on track. I feel like, right, I've had a little bit of breath of fresh air. Diet fatigue has dropped a little bit. I've got that craving, now I just wanna be back on track. Just learn not to take the piss with them. Now, this is gonna be a very little short video, actually. Um, I'm going to leave it there because I've got this off-plan meal. As always, if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, comment down below what your favourite what your favourite cereal is. You know what? Cookie Crisp, Mini Bix, and Wheat Bix. But Wheat Bix, when I was like ten years old, and when my mum wasn't looking, I'd always pour like sugar on it, and it was like soggy with sugar all over it. It was beautiful. Again, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video, where we may may be in Norway. See you in a bit.